Okay, I will switch to English and uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit of uh, a more focused experience and uh, you know try to try to tell you many uh, you know many facts uh, that uh, happened when we start our our company my company and uh, the lessons uh, out to out to this so and uh, essentially what we are going to uh, what i'm going to talk today is uh, is about uh, a discovery of uh, an encoding rna that uh, uh, help us to start a biotech that essentially help us to um, uh, address the, the, the diseases by upregulation of uh, endogenous proteins. So um, one of the very important points that will come out in the, in, in the discussion is that uh, it is essential to do uh, basic science, fundamental science for innovation and uh, we were involved in exploring the transcriptome. So essentially, we were looking at uh, the genome and what the genome is encoding. And uh, in this uh, exercise, uh, where we were trying to make a catalog of all the protein coding genes, accidentally, we identified a group of non-protein coding RNAs or non-coding RNA or long non-coding RNAs. And this include also antisense RNAs. So essentially, the RNA that are transcribed from the opposite strand, and they will uh, form some hybrid with uh, sense RNAs. Another key word is uh, serendipity, also because those basic science projects very often give you some discovery. And uh, those discoveries, uh, which you didn't plan at all, are coming out from uh, the, you know, from uh, the basic science. It is up to you to, to identify new possible application and that, that your experiments are trying to tell you. So, and uh, it is very important also that to, to think that the, the, the basic science is needed for innovation and a good, uh, having a very open eyes to, um, the, to the discovery is, is, is extremely important to um, uh, have the idea to um, apply them for, 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 for the discovery. So. Our project was, um, as mentioned, to discover what the genome is transcribed. And we have been, uh, uh, over the years, so this is a very long term project at Riken to identify the protein coding genes. And in this exercise, we found that more than half of the genes are non coding. Little by little, after a lot of skepticism, uh, others and our group found that they are involved in regulation of various activity of the genome. And particularly, um, uh, I, I will talk about the regulation at this level, regulation at a translational uh, level. And uh, actually, the, uh, out of the non-coding RNAs, we estimate there are about 30,000. 30, there is still something like 95% of them for which we don't know the function. Uh, we don't know that uh, if all of them will be functional, but uh, if you focus on the function of those long encoding RNA you, and you identify new functions, it's likely that you may identify additional, more discoveries, the different than what we have been, uh, 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 I'm going to talk now, but uh, there are many chances to um, explore the non coding part of the gene. And the discovery uh, came out uh, in, uh, in collaboration. So we have been organizing. Uh, a phantom consortium where the RIKEN has been producing, uh, RIKEN is, 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 is one of the main Japanese research organization, has been producing a very large database of uh, uh, full length CDNAs, so essentially copy of transcribed genes. And in this analysis, uh, my uh, collaborator, Professor Stefano Gustincic at IIT, the time he was at CISA in Trieste, uh, uh, was interesting in the UCHL1 because it, uh, UCHL1 is a gene involved in Parkinson's, and we identified this antisense represented here in red uh, before splicing, that splicing essentially this overlaps this region of the UCHL1. And because of this antisense was potentially interested, they started to uh, overexpress them and uh, to see if there is any, uh, any regulation. And at RNA level was very disappointing. So there is no uh, regulation of RNA level. 
And just before throwing away the whole uh, the whole project, uh, Claudia Carrieri, who was the first author, decided to, to see what happens to the protein in Western blot. And actually, in the presence of the antisense, the sense produces much more protein. So it's between uh, fivefold to tenfold in that, in that experiment. So we have one antisense that uh, does not uh, cause changes that are at RNA level, but it causes a dramatic in increase of uh, proteins. We start to look uh, at uh, what is uh, important, and we identify in this region here, it's not shown here for uh, just for. for, for, for for, uh, not, not to expand my presentation too much, but there is a sign element here. And uh, after many experiments, uh, in particular, changing this uh, uh, antisense region to artificial, uh, to uh, putting artificial antisense against any target RNA and uh, uh, trying the effect of the sign element, which is represented here, we identify a new class of, uh, of uh, antisense RNA that we call synapse because there are antisense that have a sign element that upregulate the protein translation for the RNA that they target through this binding domain, which is an essential complementary sequence and uh, is, can be synthesized with a lot of flexibility and actually um, it works for, for the majority of RNA that we have been testing uh, uh, tested so far. At, at something, some, some different level. So essentially, we are all familiar with siRNA and the inhibition of uh, protein translation or uh, uh, gene activity. This is enhancing, those are antisense enhancing protein activity. And they can be customized and work on endogenous RNA. So what we decided to, uh, to do is, we, of course, we started uh, uh, many validation. This is one, uh, um, well, one collaboration uh, with the <laughs> Teleton Institute in 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 Naples, and uh, actually we wanted to see if the sign up design against this gene sign the uh, sign up against the Cox seven B, which is a gene involved in microphthalmia with linear skin lesion when there is only one one copy of this gene. So uh, uh, here is the human phenotype. And this is the uh, Medaka fish uh, COX7B. The model consists in inhibiting splicing, so reducing to about 30% the fully spliced uh, um, uh, COX7B. So 70% does not contain the X of 2, which is important for the function. And then to try to rescue to uh, this phenotype by adding one antisense, essentially antisense with our sign element connected to see if it works to rescue the phenotype. And actually it uh, works in about 50% of the cases. The size of the head that of the <laughs> development goes back to normal if compared to our control. And those are all the data, all the details, everything is, 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 is in the paper. So essentially we have uh, demonstrated that uh, that could work uh, to rescue a phenotype. We have been thinking a lot, uh, and the, the idea is that, uh, that to use synapse as a tool, and uh, a therapeutics tool, but also a tool for various other applications, there are at least 300 haploid sufficiencies. So what are haploid sufficiency? Haploid sufficiency are diseases where one copy of the gene is uh, mutated, and so it's not functional. And the decreased dosage, you see the number of protein is uh, a normal protein. So half the amount of the protein is, uh, is sufficient to cause a, a disease. And the idea is to use the sign up to rescue the translate to use the functional copy of uh, the, the only gene that is working, but to, to make a more protein and uh, to rescue the level of protein. So essentially to have a, a therapeutic cell sign up. And uh, uh, we had uh, various other ideas about uh, the, uh, the application. So using the sign up against any other RNA. So uh, of course, uh, to increase uh, the mm -hmm. translation of, uh, of protein without uh, changing the level of RNA. So this could be used for biotechnology in the lab, for bioproduction, to produce, for instance, more antibody for therapeutics, of course, as a, a haplosufficiency is one of them where we're going to expand later 
about the possible uh, application. And the first part, uh, the, uh, I mean, one very important part is to think very well about intellectual property. And uh, intellectual property is fundamental. And the, as a scientist, you need to understand the importance of intellectual property, what is the meaning, and uh, how you will use it to, 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 to be able to use and to, uh, to be able to uh, protect the areas where your biotech is, uh, is, is involved. So you, don't, you, you cannot uh, get funding if you don't have a protection for a given, for a given area. And uh, in our in our case, uh, we were very happy to find that there was no such finding, and so basically the likelihood to get intellectual property was very high. And I, in fact, we 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 uh, filed the first patent that was in collaboration between Riken and the CISA, that was the the host institute of uh, of Stefan Augustinchich. This was uh, granted a few years later in in, uh, in USA. is is a, a very broad uh, umbrella patent that uh, that uh, covers anti sense RNA, and uh, with uh, the non overlapping part uh, containing a sign element that has the function to uh, to uh, enhance protein <laughs> translation sign element and also sequence similar to sign element. So it is, it is, it is, it is actually is, is, is very broad and, 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 and fundamental. But also what we continue to do, we continue to look at ways to, to, to protect, to further protect. And we have additional filing at, uh, 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 about, uh, about um, structures and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and other ways. So it's very important, this strategy to really have a, strategies uh, a, a, you know a series of strategy to create multiple barriers uh, to further protect uh, your area of of interest and uh, this interest for the pattern came uh, <laughs> was not only only at this time but uh, I, I know I was been I was involved in 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 in, in filing patents uh, uh, many years earlier when we were de developing genomics and methodologies to capture genes so I was fairly fairly exposed and also with some experience in, in, in consulting for, for some of the spin-off of the Riken Institute. And uh, so we are uh, we were ready to go and uh, we learn how to start a company. And first we would really want to be sure about the technology we, we tested in different lab. We have a plan and business and, and the business plan, but uh, as always, you know, you, you make a plan, it's important to make a plan, and very often you go in a different uh, direction. What we wanted to do, we wanted to develop a platform to, for making Synapse as a strong technology for broad application. We were thinking about uh, antibody production at first, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, without thinking that the therapy is maybe too complicated, and then we change our mind in the middle, and we, you will see where. And, uh, Actually, it's a very important part that you need to plan beyond what is just a paper or a patent. The patent is just enabling, but you need to prove and have a lot of experiment proving that is useful. So we started to do this. We have various experiments, and then we went to for the company and we, we created the TransSign Technologies as a what was called Riken Venture. Riken was the institute in, is the institute in Japan and it has this system to create ventures so could to provide support. The support at Riken was uh, very was very good. Actually, here is the the details of the company. Uh, started from myself and uh, and Stefano, and here a few more things about us. Essentially, we want to say we are basic scientist that uh, that uh, very very much interested in publishing our research that move suddenly moved split our 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 attention also to start some some company and you know you have your plan and then uh, it worked very well until we started the company but then we wanted to get uh, to get funding and the company was based in uh, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Japan so we were required to provide more uh, uh, proof of concept. The idea is not only to work in um, with the medaka fish, but also work uh, work with the, with the mammalian. Go to, to go with the mouse with the idea that we will raise some some. 
And here many uh, problems start to happen because we were often told by a fairly conservative uh, investing environment that it's too early and we must provide uh, uh, plenty of evidence before they would like to invest. So we were left with the lab there and uh, making many experiments in the lab, but also with this struggle to really, uh, uh, you know, really think how to make that uh, kind of evidence before we could get. And time was was uh, was uh, was moving anyway, so we would need to accelerate uh, to do uh, to do something. So, and here I would like to really um, break, you know, to, to to really comment why it was so difficult to get any funding because um, we were based in Japan, where the the attitude is. Uh, is fairly risk adverse. So it is not possible without evidence. And there are many people involved without experience as venture capital. There is a, a very little um, support and no risk takers. And if you fail, you have no future chances. And uh, if you go to the uh, big pharma, uh, there is not enough time to really develop uh, the technology before the big pharma usually stops because uh, they need a return of investment in much short, shorter time. And if you go to US, uh, they say it is interesting. So let's invest uh, to produce the, the evidence. Uh, and uh, and uh, even if you fail, that's fine because uh, investing in many, in, in many spin-offs, uh, some of them will be excellent uh, and be, be uh, moderna or uh, or that size and even if other five company will fail and one become moderna there's still a huge return and uh, the failure is just uh, one way to 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 really understand what works and what does not work and so essentially um, we, we've been looking at this um, and actually the, uh, i mean the, the, this was said not, not only by me but uh, uh, Kubota-san at uh, the Pepti Dream, that is a very successful uh, biotech uh, company in Japan at, at uh, this meeting, it was fairly inspiring. And uh, anyway, we decided to, uh, no, we, we've been thinking a lot, uh, what do we have to change to really get uh, the company uh, successful? So we have to produce the POC and uh, we were working to make the POC as a virtual company essentially uh, working in the lab under proper agreement with our uh, institution and uh, through collaboration with other uh, academic institutions. So really we're working like in a garage for a while to, pro to, to get evidence and getting the documents. And we're also making some cash because there was some re request to synthesize <laughs> synapses so the company was selling artificial, we, we, we could design them, we were selling some of those uh, Sign up, we could survive and paying for the patent fee and all the other costs without, without having funding. It is fairly unusual because usually you have some, some funding. We didn't have any except sometimes going to our own bank and, and, and help ourselves with that. But the environment has been very, fairly hostile. So we had uh, the review for the Recon Venture system and, the, the, and this uh, virtual model was not recognized. So we were told. So I told them we are developing new IP and going to the POC. And the reviewer said, oh, you don't have the employees. This is not a company. So please quit, the, quit this system. So it was a rejection. We were not doing well and, it, and losing the reconvention status. We could not use any more our labs. So we, all, all the collaboration agreement failed. So, but, but the company had already accumulated quite a, quite a big uh, uh, amount, of, uh, amount of data with proper agreement and everything was, uh, was clear. And, uh, and as a company uh, uh, founder, the mission is to keep the company alive and the ideas alive. So another important point is that there were not only Stefano and Piero here, but there were other members. We've been working as, as a team. And uh, uh, so Hazuki has been uh, developing um, many aspects of the technology. And this is a RNA biologist at Lincoln. Michael Jones, uh, he's a, um, <laughs> his, his field was genetics, but then he's been in business. And uh, uh, Sylvia and Claudio have also been involved. Uh, unfortunately, Sylvia passed away uh, <laughs> three years ago. In these days, so she has been really, really, uh, very important for the for the for the early stages. 
importantly for the business, Mike was uh, was was been in Japan for many years. So he moved back to to UK, and he is he has a, a company at the <laughs> Bebraham campus. And during lunch, he met uh, uh, a VC from the uh, <laughs> Robbie Woodman from the Takeda Ventures, and they started to talk about our company. And uh, then the discussion started. So and the discussion was, why don't you bring this company? to uk and then we can we can find we, we can fund this uh, this company so uh essentially so we have been moving from a company from transcend technologies uh, a japanese company uh essentially working uh, you know to, on uh, rd uh, commission or research and development uh, transferring know-how to transign uh, therapeutics in Cambridge with injection of venture capital. So essentially we shut down here and start a new company, made all the documentation that is needed because always you need to have all the contracts or the documentation to transfer the intellectual property in the proper way. So it's been quite a bit of work. And But we got 5 million pounds of seed investment from Takeda Ventures, which is a funny thing because um, Takeda is a Japanese company and we st started a company in Japan. And uh, both Takeda Venture as, a, as you know, in, in US with the, with, with, with the, with the sub um, company in, in, in UK, this Japanese company invest in UK from technology that are also coming from Japan, showing that how much hostile and conservative environment uh, Really is negative for 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 investment and and when you bring this in a in a different environment it it, it may actually work and at the, at the moment of course I don't know how it is Italy but I know that that there are various VCs in Milano area and and I'm sure that Italy probably is more is more, is less conservative than the situation is right. and anyway what was important is that the original um, you know the the that um, the, the, the funding was made on uh, the data that we had already. So actually actually working in the lab under collaboration agreement has been a good strategy for us. Uh, I, I don't recommend everyone to do this because it was very, very tough to do this. And uh, now there is a trans therapeutics in, and then I'm gonna talk about the, the company in, in, in the next three slides. So from that time, uh, we are already three years later after this uh, <laughs> transition, and uh, just I'm going to show you a little bit how the business has been uh, developing in in this company, and uh, also the, from 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 the slide here I have uh, received a modified from Transcient Therapeutics, but essentially the company is focused on uh, on uh, developing synapses to uh, <laughs> tackle serious diseases that can be addressed by physiological upregulation of endogenous um, uh, proteins. So uh, as I mentioned, it, it, it was started by, you know, by ourselves that went to, uh, you know, to, that, that brought the, the company in, 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 in the UK. We started with the, the Takeda Ventures, but also we, we had uh, addition of additional funds from the, the DDF, the Dementia Discovery Fund, and the Epidarex. So essentially, we have the three three companies with a total investment of seed funding is about 13.5 uh, million pounds. So essentially, this gives us um, uh, several a few years to really move and start to really uh, develop those uh, RNA <laughs> therapeutics. And the, the key technology is the, is the Synapse, so essentially, uh, and also having the platform to uh, modify and enhance uh, translation of RNAs that are expressed in cells. So as we said before, we want to increase the expression of any protein. And uh, given that we will not attach the amount of RNA, and uh, we think, and uh, uh, that uh, this um, fine tuning of uh, translation is a uh, is a kind of more safe, so we don't have uh, wrong we don't have uh, expression in the wrong cells because we target the RNA that is already in in the cells, and and also we uh, modify translation we tune up uh, uh, um, translation but it's not uh, at the level that might be suddenly toxic because there is a hundredfold more protein. But we, we we are going to you know to uh, 
1.5, 2-fold, 2.5-fold, which is quite often what you need to uh, uh, address some, for, I mean, for some therapeutic application. And we are also working on the delivery, so it can be uh, AAV uh, vectors, or we are also working to, to make it short as a synthetic oligonucleotide. So we need to put a, a piece of the sign element and, and the part of the antisense and the, within a 60 or 70 uh, base pairs, we have uh, our uh, artificial, we call mini sign up or nano sign up. And also we are thinking about um, uh, multi-targeting as a, as, a, as a drug. So we started in a, a garage and uh, or on, 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 on a desk at, at home. And uh, we have uh, essentially, uh, at the moment we have uh, 20, uh, people that are employed at uh, at uh, at TTX and with a lot of RNA biologists I visited them recently and uh, gave a talk and there was uh, really a lot of science so I did not expect uh, so so many interesting uh, biological questions after that and uh, but actually very happy that uh, the company can also speak uh, that they can also also speak science. And essentially, uh, the company is there is developing pipeline that has the potential to treat intractable um, diseases. And the idea is to go for the preclinical POC in uh, 2023, mostly in ophthalmology and in uh, neuroscience. And the neuroscience come from Stefano's expertise because he has been uh, focusing on 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 uh, you know, neuro <laughs> degeneration for many years and additional targets are on, on evolution and the company is doing multiple um, partnering. But you have uh, the picture of those two people here. Do you think that we are doing all of this? Of course, no, because we could hire a, a, a very, a very strong team. And this is actually, uh, you know, is a difficult thing if you are not in the right environment and you don't have the right connection and that will give you the credibility. This is a very important thing. So you need to, you need to work on your connection to be able to hire these people like Ian, who has, uh, you know, he has been uh, uh, CEO of startups, uh, but before he has been uh, in, in, in various, uh, in various, uh, 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 in, in, in pharma and GSK and have quite a quite a bit of, of experience, but also as you can see, he's a he's a scientist, he's a, he's a chemist, a PhD in chemistry. The same is for uh, Andrew, who is a, is a, a has also a PhD and he has also big experience in in uh, in, in from the basic science to GSK to. Uh, value, um, AstraZeneca to various other <laughs> transition science. Uh, Anuj, uh, who has been, um, you know, has, again, he's been a, a CEO at various startup and <laughs> meddling with, again, a lot of, a lot of expertise. And uh, you need to construct those team. And uh, it has been quite, uh, you know, it has been uh, extremely important, extremely important to, to really hire them. So first uh, we were uh, protecting the company by yourself. And then once we find the, 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 the right team, we've been transferring and let them run as much as possible. So here, a um, few more um, points why we believe that we have advantages. So uh, for instance, gene replacement. So um, you add uh, a, a, a gene with gene therapy or uh, a lot of RNA like uh, Moderna. The potential issue is that uh, you cannot control how much you give, and uh, so it's going to be difficult. So you may have a lot of uh, toxicity for overexpression. Well, with the, with the fine tuning of uh, translation, we may have some uh, uh, fine uh, regulation of 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 uh, of, uh, uh, and so be much more physiological as a as a as a, as a response. Um, uh, other other approaches usually uh, give a down regulation, but we are probably quite unique, uh, quite specific, I would say, to, to give up regulation. Uh, modulation of up regulation is, is 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 a key part of our of of of, of, of our of our of our strategy. And uh, because uh, functional genomics is moving very quickly, we believe that we can. Uh, um, um, identify new uh, targets 
particularly thinking at uh, targeting uh, uh, transcription networks, uh, targeting hubs uh, uh, that control expression of many genes and also with the, with the, with the multi synapse. And here is the you know, much more professional way to explain the technology. So, but uh, you know, I'm gonna go through this just to remind you what we do. There is in the cell the DNA that produces RNA, and uh, and uh, uh, we and the RNA is exported to the cytoplasm. We want to to target with the antisense the RNA on, on on the way to ribosomes to really produce more. And to do this, we again produce overlapping RNA with uh, connected to a sign element. This is as short as possible with the genes of interest and. And enhance. So, of course, there is a quite a lot of research because there are many different sign elements that can work, many different uh, uh, type of overlap that that are potentially working. So, that, and uh, uh, we don't know yet if there are many that are tissue specific or cell specific or work better in different system. Uh, there are sign elements from the mouse that is the original one. There are sign elements from the human uh, uh, human human element, but we, we also have identified from uh, Arabidopsis, uh, from a plant, uh, from, the, from the fishes, uh, and, and actually there is a whole world here that uh, still awaits for, ad for additional and uh, very, very specific applications. So we, I have uh, just uh, a few more, uh, you know, uh, arguments why those, uh, uh, why, why the, the, the technology is, is, is effective because it's uh, versatile against any protein. Uh, we uh, we can have viral and viral uh, <laughs> delivery. We can also uh, multi-targeting. Is accurate because uh, the antisense uh, is uh, for the synapse. Uh, for the, the synapse is very is very specific, and uh, does not change the RNA level. And all the protein isoforms are upregulated and uh, can uh, and is also controlled. And as we said before, and uh, actually, what uh, what I wanted to say is that, of course, once you have a, a professional team, you start to uh, work also on the, on the definition to attract other pharma, other collaborator, other other investment. And uh, again, it's uh, it's important to stress that a good part of the preliminary data were made in collaboration uh, with, with 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 the funders lab. So the, the demonstration that we can improve uh, Parkinson's disease in a mouse models by enhancing the translation of this gene, so the glial cell-derived neurotropic factors, GDNF, by using a sign-up, by producing more protein, and uh, also in the striatum, and uh, affecting a phenotype. So essentially a lower level here is, is, is the level of... Uh, uh, spontaneous movements, which essentially is addressing is 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 essential seems to be important. This mouse model uh, as a, a sign up to affect the uh, the you know to, to affect the phenotype of of, of Parkinson. And again, this collaboration with from the uh, lab of, of the start or the scientists that started the company has been quite important. And uh, I will just uh, you know we we. As a company, we we work we work on targets like uh, frataxin and Friedrich Friedrich ataxia. We need to to bring this up, GDNF, and uh, and also to produce more antibodies. So here is a, is a little bit of uh, of um, of summary. Twenty people in the company, thirteen million of funding. And there's a platform, the pipeline, and so this is quite a, it's quite a good to, to to see a company starting. is a, is a, is a big pleasure. And uh, actually, as a, if you're familiar with this, uh, you will see that uh, this is still quite early, and we are in the lead of optimization. But we are in a quite good shape to bring this into uh, more close to any clinical trial, particularly having some diseases that that are not uh, treatable. And uh, as a company, we always think going from seed to series A and series B. So here I will not, uh, no, the, those are predictions. And uh, as a company, of course, we are still, uh, uh, still, uh, uh, you know, still exposed to many risks, a little bit less than the, in the early stages. And there is a lot of work to do. This I said already, and I would like to make the, the, the final consideration that, uh, you know, 
this is uh, the story of one company, but a different company will have their own uh, their own stories. And if you are involved in this, you need to be very creative to you know to, from from the creation of your network to 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 to. to all the steps that, that will follow there is no no specific path for for success you need to you need to try you have to i would suggest that you start a company when you are very confident about the technology if you're not sure about who owns the technology you are not ready to to to, to, to start a company you need to protect your your ip and you need to think in terms of intellectual property and the potential value of intellectual property and how broad is the field that you can protect? Uh, my story is a story of a company that is not yet successful, but uh, there are important progresses and we can already learn some uh, uh, lessons from this. Basic science is, is extremely important. You don't, I think that you cannot innovate if you don't go for, the, for, for, for basic science. The uh, people that started the company as a researcher have a very important role and they should be allowed to participate. So institutional rules must be made that the scientists must, part must participate. So there's always the possibility to have a conflict of interest. That is, is a part of the game. So if you want to play safe and avoid any conflict of interest, you will have no innovation. So just to be ready to have the scientists that will play in both sides. And uh, starting your lab is important, but then move. But then once things get bigger, you have to, to, to spin it out to keep your lab healthy, continue to do the, the, the basic science and have the company to, to grow. So at that point, you need to, to uh, separate them. You need to hire proper leadership that is essential for the next steps. And, but also to do this, you need to have connections. And the connection is not only with your colleague in science, but you need to, to really look for anyone that is involved in, in, in business and, in, 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 and uh, having a very broad level of connection. Thank you for your attention. I would like to I would like to stop here and uh, uh, happy to get any any question from any question from you. And uh, I and I hope uh, that the quality of the video and everything was uh, was fine.